Americans are drowning in credit card debt. And I do mean drowning. The national credit card debt went over a trillion dollars in 2023. And as of this recording, it's 1.1 trillion. So it just continues to climb and people are struggling. They're struggling to pay the debt down. They're struggling to make their minimum payments and it's becoming a big, big issue. So if this is you, I urge you watch this video in its entirety because I'm gonna give you the complete blueprint to pay that debt off, pay it off fast and do it. Even if you can only make the minimum payments, even if you're on a low income, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it step by step. So my name is Steve Didier, welcome to the channel. And like I said, the debt is a huge problem for people right now, but it's not just the debt. Yeah, the debt is over a trillion dollars, but there's a couple other factors that are playing in and creating a perfect storm that is making it really, really difficult for people right now financially. The first is inflation. Inflation is through the roof. Do not believe what the Fed is telling you about this 8% inflation stuff. You know it's not true. I know it's not true because every time I go to the grocery store and buy a bag of my favorite coffee, it is double what it was three years ago. When I go fill up my gas tank, it is double what it was three years ago. So this is a big problem because people are using more and more of their money to pay for the base, basic necessities. Wages are not going up at the same rate that inflation is. So that is eating into our spending power. And that's one of the big factors that is making it very, very difficult for people right now. The other factor that plays into this, especially with the credit card debt, is that the interest rates on your credit card are going up. Most people don't know that their interest rate in their credit card is adjustable. So what that means is the bank can raise it at any time. So the interest rate you're paying right now is not what it was two, three years ago or four years ago or five years ago. Every single time the Fed raises the rate, the interest rate on your credit card goes up, which means your minimum payment goes up. It also means that out of the money that you're sending to your credit card company every month, more of it is going toward interest and less of it is going toward the principal, which means it is taking longer to pay that debt off. So with all of these factors combined, it's no wonder that debt is becoming a problem right now. People don't under, really understand what these interest rate numbers mean. If your interest rate on your credit card is 29%, a lot of people are, oh, well, 29%. What does that really mean? Yeah, it's a number, but what does it really mean? Here's an example. If you had a credit card that you had a $12,000 balance on, and your interest rate was 29%, your minimum payment is gonna be around $400 a month. And if you just made the minimum payment every month, it would take you 381 months to pay off that credit card. That's 32 years. That is a huge amount of time, that's a lifetime. Let's put it another way. With that same example of $12,000 at 29%, you are paying roughly $3,600 a year in interest. That is money that is just going straight into the bank's pockets and increasing their profits. That's why they're posting record numbers every year at your expense. So we need to figure out a way that you can get this stuff paid off and get it paid off quick so that you can get this weight off your shoulders and move on with your life. And that's what we're gonna get into right now. So strategy number one, and this is probably the least popular one, but it's a necessary one, is budget. I am sorry to say it, but this is important. You've got to control your spending. So the first thing that you need to do is track your expenses. Take two weeks or four weeks and write down every single penny that you spend. Everything. I don't care if you buy a stick of gum at 7-Eleven, write it down. Track everything. You are going to be surprised at how much money that you are putting out toward just stuff that is absolutely not necessary. And I know a lot of people, when I talk to them about this, they say, hey, you know what, no, I'm, I'm, I am stretched, I'm paycheck to paycheck, I'm, I can't, you know, there's, I, I can't cut costs any further. But when they start tracking, they're like, oh man. Okay, so they, they start seeing where money can be uncovered. And to use an example that I hate to use, but we're gonna do it anyway, coffee. 
All right. I am not one of those guys that said, hey, stop going to Starbucks and you're going to get rich. It's BS and we all know it. But when you're looking at paying off your debt, every dollar counts. So let's say you went to Starbucks twice a week, six bucks a pop, that's $12 a week, that's $48 a month. We'll round that off to 50 bucks for easy math because I need to keep it easy. $50 a month. Yes. I love coffee, I love going to coffee shops, but if you could skip that temporarily, temporary discomfort, it's gonna feel a lot better to have this debt gone, trust me. So that's $50 right there. And that's just one example. There are so many other things that you're gonna see when you start tracking your expenses that you can cut back on. Maybe you don't need you know, to go out once or twice a week to dinner. That can save you 40, 50 bucks a week right there. You know, you can uncover a hundred to $200 without even trying. So yeah, it impacts your lifestyle for a little bit, but for the long good, for the long term, this is going to be the best thing that you can do. So keep this in mind. Let's just say you found $200 within your budget. Now you can start putting that money toward your credit card balance. Any extra money you pay above and beyond, the minimum payment goes right to the principal. So that $200 a month now goes right to reducing your debt. And that's important because we're going to use that as one of the strategies. And these are, these are in, in order. We're going to go through them in order. So that's the first thing you need to do. So let's talk about strategy number two. Strategy number two is one that most people don't know about, but it involves interest rates on your credit cards. Like we talked about, they're sky high right now. They're, they're making it really difficult to get any traction on paying down that debt. You can call your credit card company and ask them to lower your interest rate. Many of them are going to do it. All you got to do is ask. Now, how much they're going to lower it? Who knows? And some may and some may not, but quite a few of them will. Maybe it's temporary. Maybe it's just for six months or 12 months or whatever, but it is very common for them to drop it for you if you just ask. For example, Amex has on their website. You can just apply for it right on their website. I had a client recently I was talking to and they were a couple days late on their Discover card payment. Discover, card, Discover sent them an email giving them some options, different payment plans, but one of the options was to apply for an interest rate deduction. So they will do it and it is super easy. It's a couple phone calls to your credit card providers. And let's just say you had five credit cards. If, even if two, three of them drop your interest rate from say 29 to 19 or something like that, that's going to free up some more money, maybe 50 bucks a month, maybe a hundred bucks a month. Now you can start putting that toward the principal. And this is important. If you get your interest rate lowered, your minimum payment is going to go down, but you cannot fall into the trap of going just back. Oh, great. Oh, my payment isn't $300 a month anymore. It's 240. I can just pay 240. No, you keep making that $300 and putting that extra $60 toward the principal, because that's how we start bringing these balances down. That's how we start getting this debt reduced to a manageable level. So call all your credit cards. That's your next step. Call all of your credit cards, ask them to reduce the interest rate. Guarantee some of them are going to do it. And that's going to help quite a bit because they just give you more money each month that you can put toward the principles. Method number three, a lot of people don't know this either, but you can apply for other credit cards that have what's called balance transfer. So what that means is you apply for a new credit card, you get it, and then you can take a balance from one of your other credit cards, transfer it to that credit card, and they will give you an introductory time of 0% interest. Sometimes it's six months, 12 months is very common. Sometimes you might even get as many as 18 months where you're not paying any interest at all. So again, if you're, if the majority of your payment normally is going toward interest, and now your whole payment is going toward principal, you're going to see that stuff start to drop faster, especially if you did the previous strategy. You got an extra couple hundred bucks a month to $400 a month. Now we're starting to see some major progress. Okay. This is going to keep adding up. This is going to keep again, by the time we get to the end, you're going to have a strategy where this is going to be paid off faster than you can even imagine with the balance transfer. Different cards have different terms. Some are going to have longer, periods of interest-free, some will have shorter. 
Some are going to have a balanced transfer fee. 3% is common. And that's okay because the amount that you're going to save over the period of time that you have interest free is going to way more than compensate for you know, the two or 3% that they charge to move that balance over. And do your due diligence, search for cards. They have different offers and that, and that changes all the time. I can't give you like one card right now that's gonna be, you know, 18 months forever. They change it. Sometimes it's 18, sometimes it's 12, 14, whatever. But you get the idea, search around, find a card that is giving a good length of time on the interest free and apply for that card. This can be a very powerful tool. Now, I, I've seen some videos on YouTube where these gurus, credit gurus and financial gurus are talking about, oh, well, don't do the, the balance transfer is just crap because you're just moving money around. It's not actually doing anything. These clowns don't know what they're talking about. If anybody starts saying that, just know right off the, right off the bat that they're an idiot and they don't know what they're talking about and you should not be taking any advice from them because if you can go from 29% interest rate to zero for a year, that's going to give you a whole year to really attack that balance and bring it down. So it's not just about moving debt around, it's being strategic and understanding how interest rates work and understanding how that can accelerate, greatly accelerate you getting that debt paid off. Let's look at method or strategy number four. It's a debt consolidation loan. Now, basically what a debt consolidation loan is, is you take out a loan. So let's say you have $15,000 in credit card debt at you know, average of around 26% interest. If you can get a loan, take out that loan to pay off those credit cards. And now you have all of those different credit cards on one loan at a much lower interest rate. It's very common to get at 12, eight, 10, 12% interest rates. So what that does is it combines all of your payments into one smaller payment at a much lower interest rate so that again let's say you had five credit cards and you're paying out you know i don't know 650 dollars a month in payments with this loan maybe your payment's only 300 dollars a month but you don't Oh, okay, now I can only pay 300 dollars a month you keep paying the minimum payments that you were paying except that now in this case 300 or 600 an extra $300 a month is going directly toward the principal, bringing that debt down and bringing it down fast. When you start getting a couple hundred bucks there, a couple hundred bucks in your budget, a couple hundred bucks, you know, in each one of these strategies, you will be absolutely floored at how fast that balance starts coming down. So one thing I do want to note with this is do not get debt consolidation mixed up with debt settlement because debt settlement is a whole other animal and that will destroy your credit. Don't avoid that at all costs. You know, there, there are companies out there that do set settlement. I, I, I've done videos on this. I'll do another one and just avoid that all. Make sure it's a debt consolidation loan where you take out a loan, you pay off your credit. Now there's another big benefit to your credit when you do that. When you take that loan and you pay off your credit cards, obviously your balances on your credit cards impact your credit really, really strongly. So when you pay off all those credit cards down to zero or close to it, your credit score is going to go up quite a bit. So that can give you additional leverage in terms of getting other cards and loans and, and what have you. So you can be a little bit strategic about this. Now that brings us to another point that I want to address. These last two strategies that I talked about, um, balance transfer under a new credit card or the debt consolidation loan, they require your credit score to be in a certain range. Okay. So, and I realize that a lot of you may not be there and you're probably watching this video and you're like, well, it doesn't matter. My credit, my credit won't qualify me for that. Or maybe you put in for one of those loans and they turn you down. I completely understand that. So, there's a way to address that as well. In the link on this video, I have a free guide. It's yours, 100% free, and it will explain the five credit mistakes that people are making that are damaging their credit, and chances are you are making at least one, if not all five of those mistakes. And if you address those, you can see a huge boost 
in your credit score in as little as 30 days. And it may put you in a position where you didn't qualify for a credit card or, or a loan and it gets your score up over that mark to where you can actually get it and that can make all the difference. It can make a huge step in getting this balance paid down. So if you're having some credit issues, check out that link. Those five mistakes, you, you address those in your own situation. It's probably gonna make a big difference and help you out in a big, big way. Strategy number five. This is actually a mix of strategies. Um, they're, I'm just gonna lump them together as one, this payoff strategy, okay? You may have heard about these or maybe not, but I'm gonna explain them to you and you can decide which one would be the best for you. You've got what's called the debt avalanche method, okay? The, the, the idea behind the debt avalanche method is to you know, take this extra money that we found doing these other strategies. Now you have an extra couple hundred bucks a month. Where do you allocate it that's going to be the most effective, right? So you take this money and with the avalanche method, you focus on paying off the credit card that has the highest interest rate first. Okay, maybe you have three, four, five, six, seven, who knows, maybe you have eight credit cards or more. You find the one that has the highest interest rate and you put all of the additional resources you have into getting that one paid off first. And this is a really financially savvy way of going about it because if you're tackling a balance that has the highest interest rate, then that is going to be really advantageous for you because you're gonna get that paid off and you're getting the most kind of ROI out of your money. And then the strategy is after you get that credit card paid off, you move on to one with the next highest interest rate and so forth and so on. So that is, you know, that, that's one of those strategies where, like I said, it's very financially savvy because you're avoiding paying as much interest as possible. You're using your money in the way that it's going to reduce the amount of interest you're paying the maximum amount, which will help you have more money to put toward the balances. Okay, so that's a really good way of going about it. The other method is called the snowball method. This was popularized by Dave Ramsey. As much as I don't like Dave Ramsey, and I think a lot of what he says is absolute crap, this is one where I'm gonna have to agree with him on because what the snowball method is, is it prioritizes you paying off balances, okay? So the strategy with this is like, say you had you know, your five credit cards, you get the credit card with the lowest balance and you put all your resources into getting that paid off. And then when that's paid off, you go to the next one with the next lowest balances. And then you take all the money that you were paying for that and you put it toward that one. So like say you had five credit cards and you're paying you know, 200 and 100, 100, 100, but you had an extra $400 a month. So now you're paying 500 toward that smallest balance. When you get that paid off, which would be a lot quick because it's the smallest balance, now you take that whole 500 plus the 100 you're paying on this one. Now you're paying 600 toward the one with the next smallest balance and then so forth and so on. You keep taking that money that you're paying toward your credit cards and you keep putting it toward. So that, one of the biggest benefits to this method is that you get the wins. It's the psychological feeling of looking at your credit card statement, seeing your credit card at a zero balance and it just, feels good. You know you're making progress. It gives you that dopamine rush and it confirms that you're on the right track. So this is why I recommend the snowball method. Both are good. The avalanche method is probably a little bit better way to approach it financially, but the snowball method for most people ends up being the most effective. The other benefit to the snowball method, and this is one that nobody talks about. I've researched this online. Nobody talks about it is again, the credit score. Big part of your credit score is predicated on your balances. So if you have a balance, you have a credit card that's maxed out, even if it's a small one, they look at the percentage of utilization that impacts your score negatively in a big, big way. So if you get the small credit card that's at 90% utilization, you get that paid off. You're going to see a boost to your score that also gives you a nice psychological boost and it gives you more borrowing power. So that maybe whereas before you couldn't have qualified for a debt consolidation loan or a, a credit card with a balance transfer, maybe it boosts your score enough now where you can. So all in all, I highly recommend using the snowball method as the strategy for paying off debts. You know, once you've, once you've figured out where you can get some extra money to put toward the principal using the first four, now, employ the snowball method and start attacking the balances, smallest balance first, and just work your way through it. You're gonna be really surprised 
at how well this works. And you're going to start feeling really good because you're going to start feeling that weight on your shoulder get a little bit less, get a little bit less every single month until you're debt free on the credit cards. And that, my friend, is a wonderful feeling. Strategy number six. There is a finite amount of money that you can find. If you only have so much money coming in, yes, we're going to find a couple hundred bucks here and there that you can start putting toward the balance. But it might be advisable if you want to get out of this debt as fast as possible, get a second job, get a side hustle, do something to bring in some extra money, whatever it is. I don't know your situation. I don't know your skills, your talents, your knowledge, but I'm sure that you can find at least another part-time job or start a side hustle or something that brings in, even if it's just another couple hundred bucks a month, it's going to make a big, big difference in how fast you can get those debts paid off. So, and, I, and then that's one of those ones that's like, uh, people don't like to hear it, but you got yourself into this situation and you need to get yourself out because I understand the stress that it puts on you when you're trying to make these credit card payments. You're trying to make the minimum payments and you're struggling, you're paycheck to paycheck, and you just don't seem to be making any progress. So instead of watching Netflix for a couple hours a night or whatever it is you do, do something that's going to bring in some extra money. And again, maybe it's even for a short period of time until your debt's paid off and you can stop. But our whole focus here is on getting out from under this crushing debt. So whatever you've got to do, all these little things, maybe one thing or the other isn't going to make a huge difference. But when you start putting all these together, you're going to be absolutely amazed at how fast that debt starts coming down. And let me tell you, it feels good. Whatever one of, or whatever combination of these strategies that you use, you at least you're in the mindset of moving forward and getting this debt paid off. And that is so important because when you have debt, you are a slave to the system. Our goal here is freedom. And now once you get this paid off, now you've got a lot of extra money. One, you have the stress is gone. Now you've got some extra money that you can put toward investing. You can put toward bringing in more money and elevating yourself. And that's where things start to get really good. Scope of another video. I really appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for the next video and I will see you very soon.